Hello, hello, everybody! Welcome back to Cinderella Phenomenon! Now, I think it's very important to note that we have met Rose Guy, Red Haired Dude, and we have met, um, you know, Little Mermaid Curse Rod. Um, in the opening little cinematic video thingy, we also were introduced to a guy whose name was Rumple. I'm just going to assume that means Stiltskin because that right there looks like the thread that the straw that was spun into gold, you know? And we also know that one of our guys has the Neverland curse, so I'm thinking that this is probably the second star to the right, which leaves only this as our sort of mysterious unknown power thing. And I'm honestly I'm not sure what that is supposed to Oh, you know what? That is Red Riding Hood. <gasps> Oh my gosh! I did not realize that was Red Riding Hood's hood. That's Red Riding Hood. Oh my gosh, she's probably like a werewolf. Are we gonna date a werewolf? That's gonna be so cool. Okay, let's get right to it. Let's go. This will be fun. The man says, come in. Oh. I thought the man would have been old, but... To my surprise, he looks young, probably in his early twenties. I like his scarf. He seems lost in reverie as he stares at a small notebook. Good morning. Good to see you're awake and breathing. The man looks up at her when she speaks. The instant he sees us, his eyes widen. The man says dots. Why is he staring at us like that? The better to eat you with my- oh, am I dead? What? Oh. Yeah. I'm in heaven. Or maybe... Hell? You two are angels that have fallen out of it? Oh my god, look at your... <laughs> oh my god, he did the, the thing! Oh my gosh, I can't deal with this at all. Dots. Dots. I see. What can a humble gentleman like myself do for you lovely ladies? I'm so glad I wore a hat for this. I didn't do it on purpose, I'm just really glad. Oh my gosh, your smile goes shing! Dots. I like his plinky little music. Ah, you could join me on this bed. No, honey. Let me tell you where you can put that salve. It's very comfortable and there's plenty of room for the both of you. Dude. I'll follow your lead on this one, princess. Delora, you shouldn't say that, because knowing me, impulsive as I am, if I went for it, you would have no choice but to follow. Also, I just realized that Delora's color scheme is awfully reminiscent of Kuja from Final Fantasy IX. That makes me happy. I mean, obviously not the hair or the eyes, but like the whole like purple with a little capelet and the... yeah. Princess! Oh, of course, such a beautiful lady could only be a princess. Look at the noble way you hold up the tray. <laughs> I could throw the tray at him! I'm gonna throw the tray at him. Can I throw the tray at him? I'm tempted to let you. Feisty as well? Oh, be still my beating heart. Oh, hey, that, that won us points. I'm so glad that me being feisty is uh, really making me get progress with these dudes. Huh? You. Look at my little veins. Oh, he's awake. Oh, another lovely lady has entered my chambers. Aren't you just Mr. Lucky? I don't think my heart can handle the perfection of three of you at once. Dots. Look at him blush. I think I know how Casanova here got those head injuries. He's suffering from a head injury right now! Okay. That's... That's it. I'm done. Alright, no. Let's get back to this. Some lady decided she'd had enough of his rubbish and wanted to punish him. So she cursed him? Delora, patience. He may not even be in the right state of mind right now. He 
did take injuries to the head, after all. See, Parfait is speaking my thoughts. The man finally stops to look just at me. He narrows his eyes and stares so hard I almost want to slap him. What? You are familiar. But no, it's impossible. Aren't you the crown princess? What are you doing here? <gasps> if he knows, then he's... Well, he's definitely not a witch or a fairy. It can only mean one thing if he recognizes the Ice Princess. What is your name, good sir? Uh, does he not know? I would answer any questions you ask of me, madam, but... The man looks down at the notebook in his hand. I don't remember. Dots? Amnesia? That was a horrible, horrible anime. I know everything about Angel, and yet I do not know the first thing about myself. Except that I have the rumple stiltskin. The rumple stiltskin curse. <sighs> I ruined that dramatic moment. I'm sorry, but rumple stiltskin is kind of hard to say in a dramatic voice and be serious about it. Rumpelstiltskin? Is that a fairy tale? Survey! I knew it. He's got the fairy tale curse. Does he have to spin straw into gold? Fairy tale curse? Do you remember how to break it? Nah. What I remember, I need to somehow collect three memories and get them to appear in this journal as entries. Oh, oh, dude. He shows us the notebook he's been holding on to since we entered the room. My first memory is of waking up and holding this. I thought there'd be information in here, but it's empty. Another victim of the curse. You must be tired. Sophie will leave your breakfast here and we'll give you some time to yourself. We'll be outside if you need anything else. Dots. Rumble Stiltskin. What is that fairy tale about? Dots. Delora does not do a good job of hiding her laughter. She snorts and I cross my arms, embarrassed. Mother burned the fairy tales in the palace before I got the chance to read all of them. Fine, fine, I'll keep it short. Once upon a time there was a girl that was said to be able to spin straw into gold. The king found her and locked her up in a tower. He said he wouldn't let her out until she turned all of the straw in the room into gold. But then the girl was just a regular human girl. She knew she would never be able to turn the straw into gold and feared she would be locked up forever. That was when an odd little man appeared before her and offered to do the job for her if she gave him something in return. The girl gave him her necklace and the man spent the rest of the night spinning straw into gold. However, the girl wasn't released. The second night she was given more straw to spin, the little man appeared once more. This time she gave him her ring. On the third night, the king ordered her to spin straw one last time, and if she did, she would be released and made his queen. However, that night the girl had nothing left to give to the little man, so they made an agreement. He would spin the straw into gold for her so long as she gave him her first child. I personally never understood why the girl would want to marry the king in the first place. Hush, I'm trying to tell the story here. Dots. Years passed and the queen finally gave birth to her first child. That night, the odd little man returned and demanded his due, but the queen didn't want to give up her child. The man then said he wouldn't take the child if, he wouldn't take the child if the queen was able to guess his name in three days. The man's name was Rumpelstiltskin. Did she guess it? Oh, yeah. The night before her time was officially up, the queen was drawn to the forest by the sound of a little voice. She saw the little man celebrating his upcoming victory, singing about how nobody had or ever would guess his real name, which was Rumpelstiltskin. He doesn't sound particularly smart. So agrees the general populace. Sometimes I wonder how Hans was able to come up with such tall tales. Well, the Marchant is opening soon. I expect another busy day. Especially busy for you, Sophie. 
You need to start coming up with good deeds. Dots. The Amnesiac Casanova. <laughs> the Amnesiac Casanova. Yep, that is a thing I approve. Was allowed to stay at the Marchin with the other boarders. Because he still seemed capable, Parfait set him to work one as one of the Marchin servers. Annis' protest that he remain in bed fell on deaf ears. Parfait couldn't very well throw him out, not while knowing he had nowhere to go. I would be incapable of showing him such kindness given all the nonsense he spouts at us. The people that frequent the march and began to steadily ignore me altogether. Like I don't exist. It's better than the stares and the hateful looks. Rumple! You aren't here to flirt! This lovely lady is unattended. Sir Rumble, please! You're making me blush. Because the man couldn't remember his name, he fashioned one from his own curse. Rumble. I think it suits him. I'll never understand, Parfait. This amorous waste of space is about as useful as karma. <gasps> I've returned! I love the sparkles! Speak of the devil. Did you miss me? Karma had left abruptly yesterday, saying that she had something very important to take care of. Waltz trails in after her now, carrying several boxes in his arms. Why am I carrying these? Because you made me run that errand for you at the toy shop the other day. And because gentlemen carry things for ladies. I'm going to drop them now. Those boxes contain very important contents. Welcome home, Miss Karma. Nice to see you survive the trip, Waltz. Thank you, Annis. Thoughts! So, this is our new housemate. We have not had the opportunity to meet. I am... <gasps> I am 100% okay with this. We are all surprised when Rumpel suddenly reaches out to grab Karma's hand. My life before this moment has been a depressing monochrome. Now that you have entered my bleak existence, I see everything in beautiful, blazing color. And nothing shines more brightly, more vividly, than you. I am Rumple, my sweet. Let us talk of marriage! <laughs> I don't have commentary for this all that much. Um, I love it. I love this death stare. Dots. I stare at Karma, waiting for her to flirt back. At the very least, I expect her to wave Rumple away for being a fool. But she remains eerily silent. Answer, my angel, I beg of you. Keep. Say the word, and it is done. Your filthy hands off of me. And there we go. TKO. Ow! Not again. Again. I would never be interested in the likes of you. Go on, lad. Give him a good beating. Like the one you gave to me. My queen, there is no need for violence. What did you call me? Please calm down. Rumple is still recovering. What is going on? Karma is a man. Doesn't take kindly to being flirted with. Or proposed to. Dots. I like how everybody in this entire frame just looks super uncomfortable with what's going on. She... Is a man? Dude. 
like I said, I don't care. But your voice, your face, your breasts. <laughs> Ow. That's what you're focusing on, pervert. I worship all aspects of the female form, but my particular favorite has always been... <laughs> Poor guy. He's got a head injury, and now I'm sure he has a kidney injury. Do yourself a favor and shut up. I would never have known. But why would he do this? Dots. Don't look at me like that. I have my reasons. Is it because of your curse? Dots. Yes. I... I am undone. My heart is in pieces. You knew him for ten minutes. For those that can hear the music of their heart, like I, it takes only a look to fall madly, irretrievably in love. Rumple, I like you. I like you. I want to be your friend. I don't want to be your girlfriend, but I do want to be your friend. You seem like just a... Well, for lack of a better phrase, a bang-up gent. I must leave. My heart will need time to heal. Yeah, and your ribs and your head. Dots. Merchant attracts all sorts, don't it? That one is entirely Parfait's fault. Alright, alright, nothing to see here. Back to work. Dots. I'm still in shock from what I learned earlier. It's not that shocking! Karma! A man! Be still my beaten heart! To be honest, like... When Karma first walked in to the toy shop, and I thought he was a lady... Still down with it! He is the prettiest lady I've ever seen. And I'm sure he will also likewise be the very handsomest man I have ever seen. It's not fair that he's so beautiful as a woman. I know, but life isn't fair, so... If the female population of Angiel knew the truth, Karma would be hunted down for making the rest of us pale in comparison. Yeah, um... You know what? How about, rather than making all these funky comparisons and stuff, we just accept Karma as he is, and just, like, shoo. You know? We don't gotta make a thing out of this. Just let him live his life. Annis, being good, I suppose, prepared a special lunch to welcome the newest Marchin boarders. We've all been invited to the private dining room. Excuse me, is Lady Parfait here? Prince Rod! Perfect timing. Please, join us for lunch. I only came to talk to you, Lady Parfait. But I'm hungry, and I have no wish to make you wait while I eat. Come, join us. Please, Your Highness, I've made too much. As usual, you must help us finish. Aww, poor Rod. Very well. Does Sebi eat? Cursed princess and a cursed prince. What an eccentric collection of friends you have, Lady Parfait. I wouldn't say they were eccentric, necessarily. You're the most eccentric one here, Rumple. Really now? I sit silently in my chair. I am uncomfortable around so many people. You and me both, babe. Even when Mother was alive, I had all of my meals alone, since my parents were always too busy to sit down for meals with me. The meals with Ophelia and her children were always awkward and silent. Somehow the atmosphere here is lively and friendly, even though I barely know anyone here. Dots. Is something wrong? Excuse me? You've barely touched your food, don't you like it? Dolores said this was one of your favorites. Dots. I'm just not used to eating with company, that's all. They say that sharing a meal brings the family closer together. Dots. Garland. Oh. I apologize. Closer together, huh? 
So, have you made any progress on how to do those good deeds, princess? There's no way I'm admitting that I don't even know how to complete one. Oh, I forgot you're not so good on the doing good front. You are not very helpful. Why don't you ask someone to teach you how to do good? What? Well, that's not something you hear every day. As in... Take some kind of lessons? If you're having so much trouble on your own, you should ask someone to give you advice or teach you. That is actually very good advice, kids. Let me underscore what Parfait just said. If you're trying to do something, and you don't know how to do it, ask somebody. And if there's nobody around to ask, Google! Just, you know, take what you read on Google with a pinch of salt, because sometimes forums will lead you astray. It's as simple as that. But YouTube tutorials, those are great. What's this I hear? The princess needs advice. Yes, I do, and I would love it if you would be the person to give me that advice. Well then, she's in luck. I love the music. I love the music in this game. I happen to give the most excellent advice, and believe me when I say I can teach almost anything. I believe it. Dots. The princess is indeed lucky, as I am available for teaching duties. No, that's okay, Sparkly Rumple Man. I'd really rather have Tiresias over here do it. No doubt I'd be the better choice, as I don't go about deceiving the world. Okay, you know what? No. You need to shut up, okay? You transphobic shithead. Excuse me. Aw, oh, snap! From one-sided flirting to bitter enemies, and all in the span of a few hours. The man broke my heart! Dots. Anyway, I'd also be happy to help you in any way I can, princess. I'm sure your stepbrother would also be happy to help as well. No, he would not. I guarantee he would not. I don't think I would make the best teacher for this sort of thing. Annis, you are probably the sweetest person I know, so... Like, even if you weren't going to actively impart wisdom to me, learning from you by example actually probably would be the best teacher. I only teach others how to fight. Never mind the fact that Jurian herself still struggles to be good. What? You're lucky, aren't you? So many people are willing to help you. Why? Hmm? Why are you all willing to help me? That's what we do at the Marchin. We help each other. Lesson number one. Doing good means helping whenever one can. Dots. Just let any of us know if you want our help. Trust no one but yourself. You need not care for anyone but yourself. This is what Mother in the last few years have taught me. I've always been alone, and it's easier that way, and yet... These strangers, these people that I've only known for a few days, are so willing to help me when they'll gain nothing in return. Is this the goodness I was meant to see? Father? How can I even begin to trust and care for others when I have forgotten how to do so? I'm slowly beginning to understand what I must do. Oh. Sweetie. The Decision. Chapter 2. I don't see why this is necessary. Of course this is necessary, princess. You work to show you can be useful. For the last half hour, Parfait and Delora have been debating what chores they want to give me. I cannot believe they are seriously going to make me work like a commoner. Sweetie, learn how to pour drinks. No freeloaders at the margin, remember? You can't pull the princess card anymore now that you're a homeless peasant. Being demoted to homeless peasant is not my fault. If you really think about it, it was kind of me to demote you. Dots. Stop teasing her, Delora. Sophie's had a lot thrown at her already. I'm only speaking the truth. 
Besides, working to live is the commoner's way of life, but at least it's rewarding. Dots. But if you do nothing, you get nothing. No food, no clothes, no bed. You are no longer a princess, Sophie. Life here at the margin is comfortable, and you need to work for comfort. Remember that. This is a good life lesson, kids. That, you know, nothing in this world is actually free, and if you want something, you have to work for it, and earn it, and all that. Because, you know, even if it would be super nice if somebody would give you something for free, that means that they no longer have that thing. And sometimes that can be extremely important, that they have that thing, so it's quite a sacrifice if they give it to you for free. So, that's why you gotta work for stuff, and earn it, and or earn money and pay for it, which is kind of the same thing, just a little bit less direct. Anywho, let's take some life lessons. Yep, working hard, it's good for you. Dots. What you do is your choice, princess. Do I even have a choice? You keep asking that, and yes, you do, but you should make the smart one. Not really, no. Let's see. How about cooking duties? No way, she'd burn a salad. Dots. She could be a receptionist? And we'd lose all of our customers. Bartending! That's... That's probably true. I'm right here, you know. Dots. Sorry. Sorry. Do you have any useful skills at all? Government and statesmanship, I assume, because she is a princess. Dots. As a princess, I had servants who did everything for me. They cleaned my room, helped me dress. How am I expected to possess skills for things I've never done before? Aha! Hmm? I found the perfect job for our Cinderella. Is it mopping? Or is it, um, scooping ashes out of the fireplace? What? I get to sweep! Ta-da! Sophie will be in charge of sweeping the Marchant's floors. What? Perfect. Even she should be able to do that. Do I get a tutorial mode, though? Because, like I said, if you've never done something before... I was doing a play with this gal a couple years back, and she must have been, like, 15 at the time we were doing this play. Anyway, she was playing a waitress, and part of her job was to sweep the floor, and, like, she was sweeping wrong, and all of us were sort of looking at her puzzled before anybody said anything, and... You know, we were asking her, like, hey, why are you sweeping like that? And she goes, well, I've never swept before. And, you know, I assume, like, I don't assume she was, like, spoiled and had no chores, but I'm pretty sure that she was used to either just vacuuming everything or, like, maybe using a Swiffer, because a conventional broom, the play was set in the 50s, so Swiffers weren't invented yet, an actual broom was not going to happen. Anyway, so we, the older folks in the cast, had to show her how to use a broom. I refuse. But look, I even put a cute little ribbon on the broom just for you. It's your very own special broom. <gasps> Do I get to be a witch? Okay. A princess does not clean. You're not a princess anymore. Hard-headed as ever. Don't worry, I have a fix for this. Huh? Is it stuck to my hand? All of a sudden, the broom flies into my hands. I'm pulled helplessly along as the broom begins to sweep the floors. Oh no, it's Fantasia. Try to pull my hands away, but they may as well be glued to the broom. They do not budge. What have you done? You should be thanking me. I'm helping you with your duties. Delora, isn't that a little too much? Oh, nonsense. The princess is learning useful new skills. Mr. Broom will teach her everything she needs to know. I like Delora. If the floor is dirty, Mr. Broom will come to life and start sweeping. And it will not stop until the floors are spotless. What? Come on, Parfait. We've got time for a cup of tea. But... She'll be fine. A little sweeping never killed anyone. Uh, Dots? You are dreadful! Enjoy your time with Mr. Broom! Oh, I will. Wait! Did they really just leave? Ah! This is so exciting. It's like a dance move. Hey, slow down! The broom begins to sweep faster. <laughs> Despite my protests, I am still forced, like a puppet, to sweep the floors with grudging tenacity. Aw, there's Sparkly! Uh, and 
On that extremely clean and festive note, we will save our progress. Save it. And we will say goodbye for this episode. This is so fun! I love it! I never want to stop playing. Yeah, how? Why? I should probably have just like done an eight-hour stream or something of this. Okay. That's not gonna happen. I do not have time to do that. I gotta go to a day job. Anyway, see y'all in the next episode. Toodles! <laughs>